Grabe no, malapit yung eleksyon. Kaya nga, sino mabotohin mo? Hmm, of course, killer na ako. <laughs> Kanina nga, nasugatan ako, lumabas ang dugo. Kulay feng? Oh, no. Ikaw, ako, kay Bonnie. Solid Bonnie to, kahit ano mangyayari. Lahat nga ng gamit ko, puro na red. Tapos yung mga feng, tinapon ko. <laughs> Hello po, welcome to Inibu Resto Bar. Can I take your order? Mm, well, pa-order nga ng lugaw. Kasi mukhang paborito niya. Wow! <laughs> na may personal ka naman yata. By the way, saan yung friend mo lagi mo kasama? Orderan na din natin. Ah, sabi niya di daw siya makakarating busy ata. Ah, no show! <laughs> Familiar. Below the belt na yung pinagsasabi. <laughs> Sobra na. Sa lahat ng i-order, lugaw no, talaga. Ay, ato masama sa lugaw? Eh, paborito mo naman talaga. Hindi, parang sinasabi mong lugaw yung kandidato ko. <laughs> Ay, eh, mga sir, wag po kayong mag-away dito. Eh, bakit? Sino bang bubotohin mo? Oo nga, sino bubotohin mo? Si Paco. Ay, umalis na tayo. Mag-isa kang umuwi. <laughs> Ay, so yes, the election is fast approaching. Lang days na lang. And at the same time, marami ng relationship ang nasira. Friendship, families, because of different political point of view. May mga masasakit ng salitang nabitawan. Hindi lang personally, pero mas malala sa social media. And as Christians, representative of God. How should we act in this season? Are we showing to everyone that we are the salt and light of the world? Or do we also act like the rest of the world? I would like us to be reminded that whether we like it or not, there will be a new president. Kahit di man natin gusto yung nanalo, siya pa rin yung bagong presidente. And after six years, tapos na naman yung term, another election na naman. Another new president. After 12 years, 18 years, 24 years, 120 years. Hanggang mawala na tayo, mawala ka na, nagbago ng sistema ng pamahalaan, baka maging monarchy na tayo. Who knows, di ba? But one thing is for sure, there will always be a new leader. And I would like you to know that God is sovereign, even sa result ng election. His plans are always good and perfect. Tapos we will ask, huh? Yung nanalong presidente, good pa yun? Talaga! Saan part? Inibudi kita magets To give you an example, sa John 19, dito na part, pinahuli na si Jesus ng mga Jewish leaders. Tapos, pinadala na nila kay Pontius Pilate. Siya yung governor ng Judea during that time. Under siya ni Tiberius, who is the Roman emperor during that time also. Tapos yung mga Jewish leaders, ini-insist nila na dapat mamatay si Jesus. The Jewish leaders insisted, we have a law. And according to the law, he must die because he claimed to be the son of God. So sa kanila, blasphemy yun. At hindi nila matanggap to the point na gusto nilang ipapatay si Jesus. Ganyan kalala yung kiniklaim ni Jesus, which is hindi nila magets. Tapos sinasabi nilang, crucify him. Crucify! Tapos nung narinig ni Pontius Pilate itong mga sigawan, he was even more afraid and he went back inside the palace. Tinanong niya si Jesus, where do you come from? But Jesus gave him no answer. Kasi dito na point, Jesus was already determined to fulfill the will of God. Which is to offer his body as a sacrifice, okay, to shed his blood for all of us to pay for our sins. Si Pero si Pontius Pilate, nag-aalala siya, takot siya, di ba? Takot siya para kay Jesus. Kasi, sino naman gusto, di ba, na mamatay or, or maging cause or part sa pagkamatay ng iba and alam ni Pontius Pilate, di ba, na inusente siya. Sabi niya pa dito, Do you refuse to speak to me? Don't you realize I have the power either to free you or to crucify you? Which is my point naman talaga si Pontius Pilate. Kasi in our own limited mind, kung hindi natin kilala talaga yung Diyos, we would think that whatever we have, we have the power, we have the status, that we can do anything. And actually naman, ba? In our mind, ang good is dapat hindi masaktan, uh, we defend the innocent people, which is tama naman, ba? But again, God's wisdom is sovereign hindi natin mag-grasp talaga yung kanyang wisdom. It is set apart. Of course, dapat lang talaga because He is God. We will never know exactly the details of His plans. Instead, let's just focus sa character ni God. He is always faithful. So, ang sabi ni Jesus, You would have no power over me if it were not given to you from above. Therefore, 
the one who handed me over to you is guilty of a greater sin. Jan, you will see that God is sovereign sa lahat ng bagay. Kung ako si Pontius Pilate, tapos marinig ko yung sinabi ni Jesus, mapapawaw ako. Diba? Kasi nga, unaware din si Pontius Pilate kung sino si Jesus. Diba tinanong niya pa nga si Jesus kung saan siya nanggaling? Kasi nga, di niya kilala si Jesus. Si Pontius Pilate, unbeliever siya, di siya naniwala sa Diyos ni Abraham, Jacob, at ng mga tao sa Bible, at ng Diyos natin. Yet, he was used by God to fulfill his plan. Diba, pati ang unbeliever will be used. That's why we cannot box God kung ano siya, kung ano yung plan niya. Because he is God. In relation sa election, kahit sino man yung iboboto mo, magkaiba man tayo ng iboboto, one thing is for sure. The will of God will always prevail. So, ibig sabihin yan, inibo, hindi na tayo mag-iisip kung sino yung iboboto. That's not the message. God gave us wisdom, discernment. If we will seek Him, consult Him, we will know His plans. We will know His will. Over all these things, our hope is the character of God. He is always good. Kahit minsan, di natin mag Kasi nga, limited yung mind natin. Nakabase lang yung understanding natin sa ating limited mind. But if we will trust and base it sa wisdom ni God, all the more that we will trust Him no matter what will happen around us. All the more hindi tayo masastress sa election, makakatulog tayo ng mahimbing sa gabi because we know that He is a faithful God. Na kahit tayo faithless, He will still remain faithful because He cannot deny Himself. That's our confidence, not on our own wisdom, but the wisdom of God. Kasi siya yung standard ng pagiging faithful at promise keeper. Mangyayari at mangyayari pa rin ang kalooban ng Diyos. And another point is that kahit sino pa yung magiging leader, yung mananalo ngayong election, another one thing is for sure, we will never be satisfied. We will never be satisfied with the new president. Siguro kahit yung mga sinusuportahan yung presidente, time will come na you will also disagree, di ba? Kung ano man yung gagawin ng bagong presidente. And to share with you, ako gusto kong pumunta ng Canada. Gusto kong mag-abroad, di ba? Or manirahan doon. Kasi sabi nila, di ba, greener pasture doon tayo. So ako, curious na curious ako. Gusto ko siyang eh, i-check muna, di ba? So hanggang sa umabot ako kung ano yung mga lugar doon, mga news, pinapanood ko. Tapos may mga comment doon sa news. And na-amaze din ako kasi yung mga tao din pala doon, na, na nakatera din doon, they are also complaining sa maraming bagay. So, akala natin no, na uh, dito sa Pilipinas, yes, there are problems and we complain. At hindi ko naman sinasabi na hindi na maganda na umunlad yung bansa natin. If you will think also, sa kanila na maunlad yung bansa nila, people are still not satisfied. So, you will have that idea na kahit anong mangyari dito sa mundo, we will never be satisfied. That's actually the condition of our hearts. Kasi alam niyo bakit? Our heart seeks perfection, infinite things, forever, panghabang buhay. Yet, if you will observe, the world is finite, limited. Malaki man yung mundo, kukulangin pa rin siya para mapunan yung butas, yung pagkukulang, or yung emptiness na meron dito sa puso natin. I hope that you will realize that kulang na kulang ang mga bagay dito sa mundo. Sabi nga dito sa verse, He has made everything beautiful in its time. He has also set eternity in human heart. Yet, no one can fathom what God has done from the beginning to the end. Meron pong eternity dito sa puso natin. Kaya, we will never be satisfied. And is it a bad thing if we will think of it really hard? Hindi. The good thing about it is that we would learn from this message that and we will ask ourselves na kung yung heart ko, ang dinidesire niya is a perfect leader, an eternal leader, a limitless leader. Sino ang perfect candidate? Wala naman dito sa mundo, meron ganun, di ba? Pero siya yung ikakampanya ko at gusto ko makilala nyo at ikakampanya nyo din sa ibang tao. Siya ang the greatest man in history. Jesus. Had no servants, yet they called him master. Had no degree, yet they called him teacher. Had no medicines, yet they called him healer. He had no army, yet 
kings feared him. He won no military battles, yet he conquered the world. He did not live in a castle, yet they called him Lord. He ruled no nations, yet they called him King. He committed no crime, yet they crucified him. He was buried in a tomb, yet he lives today. To end this, I hope that during this season, may we become the salt and light. May we show Christ-like character and more than the candidate that we're campaigning, I hope na kung gano tayo ka-eager to campaign sa ating mga candidates, I hope na mas eager tayo, mas energetic tayo, mas passionate tayo to campaign the name of Jesus Christ.